Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 29th of June 2020 and the time has just gone 11.55 British summer time. And it's been a reasonably choppy start to the European session. Uh, the indices opened lower, then they were quickly in positive territory, then they were going back and forth and now they're showing modest gains. Um, Dax and the FTSE and the likes, they're all up, you know, uh, three tenths, uh, five tenths of a, of a percent. So modest enough gains, but the kind of indecision and the kind of whippiness of the market tells me that traders are kind of wondering, wondering which way to turn. Um, the common themes picking up from the back of end of last week uh, continues to be sadly the coronavirus crisis, crisis the COVID-19 crisis. Um, the situation in the, in the US has gotten particularly bad. Um, we saw quite a few states in the US last week saw a dramatic inc increase in the rise of new cases and at the back end of last week on um, US stock markets um, particularly had a, had a decline uh, on the back of the news that a number of US states such as Texas and Florida have actually been rolling back on the reopening of the economies. So traders in this part of the world are thinking what's, are we going to have a similar scenario here? You know, Europe, many European economies and the last few weeks and months have taken steps to gradually reopen their economies, get things back to back to normal. Should we see a spike in cases uh, in in Europe? Are we going to see something similar as well? Are we going to? Is it going to be a case of two steps forward, one steps backward? Um, it is worth worth noting in terms of the the health stats. They are considerably worse in the U.S. in comparison with Europe. So that is necessarily necessarily. Uh, Europe is necessarily going to go down the, that route, but it's a, it is certainly a possibility. Um, it's something which traders are, are clearly mindful of. Um, this morning, we heard from the UK's Prime Minister, Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Uh, he kind of talked about how now is not the time to be taking a step back in terms of the economy. Uh, um, Mr. Johnson pledged, you know, in advance, back in the last year, on the run up to the general election big spending across education, technology and infrastructure and he's basically doubling down on that. So um, like many other, other economies around the world, yeah, the attitude is kind of throw money at the problem. And you know, it's central banks can really do so much. It is time for fiscal policy, government spending and the likes um, to really kind of play its role too. So what I'll do now is I'll take a quick look at the week ahead article, um, discuss the, event, the major events of the week coming, then I look through the major indices, major currency pairs, and the major commodities. So for those of you that tune in fairly regularly, you will know what the structure is. Um, this here is the week ahead article. It can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, news, and analysis. You'll find it there. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have the final reading of UK first quarter GDP. Uh, tomorrow, we also have fourth quarter numbers out from FedEx. The US-based delivery company. Um, that's going to be of interest because given the huge rise of online shopping in the last few months because of the lockdowns, um, we're going to, you know, FedEx numbers are going to be interesting. You know, we, as you've seen, online retailers have done very well and therefore online, online retailers require delivery services. Uh, we have the, the survey, the tanking survey out of Japan for the second quarter coming out on Wednesday. Also Wednesday, we have the first quarter figures out from Sainsbury's, uh, one, one of the big British supermarkets. Wednesday, we have German unemployment too. We have the manufacturing PMI reports for the major economies of the world coming out on Wednesday. Uh, keep in mind, um, not too long ago, I believe it was only last week, uh, we, uh, we had the, um, the flash readings of manufacturing from a number of countries, the UK, Germany, France, the US, and they all show a big rebound in activity between May and June. Uh, so that, that's going to be, people are going to be keeping an eye on that. Constellation Brands have first port numbers out on Wednesday. Uh, we have the Fed Minutes uh, coming out on Wednesday. Keep in mind, at the, at the last Fed meeting, the Federal Reserve basically said interest rates are going to be kept at, at or almost at zero, uh, probably till about 2022. And they made it very clear the U.S. Central Bank is going to do what it takes to get the economy back on track. Lastly, uh, well, let's say lastly, um, next up on the list, U.S. non-farm payrolls. Uh, it usually comes out on the first Friday of the month, but this this um, 
this month, it, this this particular report will come out on Thursday, because which which is Thursday the second of July, because Thursday the third apologies because Friday the third of July uh, is is going to U.S. holiday because of the U.S. Fourth of July celebrations. So on Thursday, non-farm payrolls are going to be out. That's going to be the most important and most closely watched reading uh, not report of the uh, of the week. Um, Keep in mind, last last month's reading, they're expecting the headline figure, the number of jobs and payrolls, to to decline by 7.8 million, 8 million jobs. It actually increased uh, by 2.5 million. So there's a huge shock in that front. And traders are going to be wonder, wondering if economies are reopening, are more people going to be back in jobs? Uh, lastly, um, we have the ser the service PMI readings for the major economies of the world. Like I said, we already had we already had some flash readings uh, for, the, for the June report uh, not too long ago, and they show um, the UK, Germany, France, and the likes, and they all showed show decent rebounds in activity between September and um, and and uh, apologies between uh, September but between May and June. So traders are going to be watching out for that as well. Essentially, while economies reopen, are we going to see uh, economies pick up as well, and um, which? But as we as we know from the US, if you open the economy and people and people aren't really um, people are milling around as normal as they were pre crisis, could we see a spike in, a spike in infections and all of a sudden those those reopenings could be reversed, which we're we're sadly seeing in some US states. So starting off um, with the major indices, as always, I pick with the begin with the FTSE 100. So a bit of a common theme here. I'll be covering the FTSE, the DAX, the S&P 500, and the Dow. A bit of a common theme all across here. Nice upward trend for the last few months. The FTSE hit a three-month high in June, but then we had a bit of a pullback here. The highs of late June didn't take out the highs of early June, and now we're kind of consolidating in this zone around here. We're pretty much on this trend line here from the lows of late March through the lows of mid-June. If you can hold above it, and if you can hold above the 50 day moving average, which is just below it, it's likely that the wider upward trend could it should uh, should continue. And if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the, the June highs in around 63.13. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards this red line here at the 200 day moving average, and that comes into play at 67.70. If on the downside, we do manage to kind of move, move lower, and we do manage to break below this trend line. And if, even if we go below this this line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 66,050, the next big number to keep an eye out for to the downside will be the big psychological number of 6,000. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here, down around uh, 5,800. It's quite a similar picture across the other US, across the other indices. And you'll see what I mean in a second. We're now looking at the DAX. Solid upward trend, nice trend line going along here. As we can see, we've actually just fallen below that trend line. We're not too far away from it. There's still a possibility we could get back above it and look to continue on, press on higher again. And should that be the case, we could be looking at targeting, heading back up towards the June highs in at 12,930. And if you go beyond that, 13,000, the big number, the big psychological number, will be the next level to keep an eye out for after that. But notice how we are in a bit of a consolidation area here. We haven't really taken up the lows, recent, the, the most recent lows, but at the same time, the highs have been lower. So right now, it looks as if the bias is to the downside. And should that be the case, if we do get a decent break below here, we could take us back towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. We can see how nicely it acted as support on a few occasions uh, in, in May. So the possibility the metric could act as support again in the future. And that comes into play at 11,475. Looking at what's going on over in the US, starting with the Dow Jones. Similar picture here, the Dow Jones has been a nice upward trend for the last number of months. It hit a four-month high in early, early June, but notice how similar to the DAX and the FTSE, hit a multi-month high, had a pullback, found support here from the 50-day moving average, this blue line along here. 
the rebound, um, the, sub the subsequent high in mid-June didn't take out the highs of early June, and we've actually seen a few lower lows. So traders are wondering, what's the next move? Is it a case of we are going to find some, we're going to hold support above the 50 moving average, and then the wider upward trend will continue, or is this the beginning of a series? You know, we've had a lower low, a lower high, and a lower, you know, how we're moving lower. If we, if this, if this, if we continue to move lower and we take off this low, then we'll have seen a couple of lower lows and lower highs. So that could take us back down towards the kind of 24,000 area. On the flip side, if the market does manage to maintain support from the 50 day moving average, which comes into play around 24,970, there, thereabouts, if you can hold above that metric, we can look to press on higher from here, retest the 200 day moving average. Notice on a few occasions it acted nicely as resistance. So that would be, a, if, if we do move higher, it will be a closely watched area, which comes into play at 26,288. And if you press on higher beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the early June highs. And lastly, take a look at the indices terms over at the S&P 500. Once again, similar situation there. It's been a nice upward trend for the last number of months. Similar scenario to the Dow, where it hit a four-month high in early in early uh, early June, had a pullback, moved lower. The highs of mid-June failed to take out the highs of early June, and we've been creeping lower ever since. And in fact, we're below that trend line. We're pretty much below the truly moving average, so things aren't looking particularly strong for the S&P 500. But nonetheless, we're above the uh, the 50 moving average, the blue line here. We're also above the water day moving average, which which is which acted nicely as both resistance and support uh, in May, and also support again in, in mid June. If you can hold above the water day moving average at 2,918, it's likely it's likely a wider wider trend trend could be could remain intact. Should, should that be the case, we could be looking at testing this area here, which is like the the late the late June highs in around here, in around 3,155, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards the early June highs in around 3,233. So we're currently trading at 30, 30, 23 on the S&P 500. The next area for, for support, should you move lower, is 3,000, and then if you go below that, the 50-day moving average and also the 100-day moving average. I'll take a look now at some of the big indices. Starting off with the euro versus the US dollar. So wider picture, so about mid-May onwards, euro dollar has been in a nice upward trend. Uh, hit, a, hit a three month high in mid-June, drifted, drifted lower, so had a bit of a pullback. We reacted, we bounced back from the pullback. The subsequent move to the downside here uh, last week didn't take out the lows of mid-June. So we're still in, in the wider upward trend. If you look the press on higher from here, and if you take off the recent highs, say the high of last week, we could put us on course back towards the kind of 114 area. And then if we go beyond 114, we could be looking heading back towards the highs of March in around one spot 14.95. If on the flip side though, if you manage to move lower yet again, and we take out last, the most recent lows here in at one spot 11.68, that could put us on track for this red line here at the 200 day moving average, and that comes into play at 1 spot 10 at 33. I should now take a look at the pound versus the US dollar. The so pound dollar hit a, hit a multi month high in the middle of June, but in early, early June, but since then it has been drifting lower, seeing a lower low. A lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. So things are heading are not looking great for the pound at the moment. Um, we're below the 20 moving average, the 100 and the 50 day, and we've basically fallen back to a level last seen. Uh, you know, we're talking about three, three and a half weeks low. So if we do let's press on lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards 122, and then if you go below 122, we could be looking heading down towards this area here the mid-May lows of in at one spot 2076. And if you go beyond that, we can then be heading back down towards 120 itself. That would be the next big number to keep an eye out on. <clears throat> if on the flip side though, the market kind of the wider upward trend that has been in for the last few months, if that does come into play, 
uh, yet again. If you do get back above the 50 moving average and the world moving average, we can then be looking at retesting the 20 moving average here in at one spot, 26.83. Notice how it acted nicely at resistance uh, in the middle of June. Uh, and if the metric has been important in the past, it makes it likely to be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. And if, but if we do retake the 200 moving average, we could, then, we could then be on track to retest the mid, mid uh, the early June highs in at one spot, 28.13. <coughs> Excuse me. Before I do, uh, I'll cover now gold and then bring crude oil and then look to wrap things up. My apologies, that is copper. So the gold market, very interestingly, um, only last week, hit its highest, hit a, hit a fresh, um, hit a fresh seven and a half year high. Uh, it was the highest levels. In fact, even today's levels just are not too far away from it. <clears throat> so we're not too far away from about a seven and a half year high in gold, which really tells you everything you need to know about how, how strong the market is. Gold hasn't been particularly volatile recently. The, the, the swings we've seen haven't been particularly strong, but it's in a very strong upward trend. So we're currently trading at 17.72. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards 1800. That's, like the, that's, that's the next big level to keep an eye out on for gold. Uh, if we do see a pullback, support could come into play um, from the, the lows of Friday in at 14.47. And even if you go below that, it could be heading back towards this, this blue line here, the 5th of the moving average, which comes into play at, third, sorry, apologies, 17.23. And we can see that it, it nicely acted as support on a few occasions, so the possibility that metric could act as support yet again. And even if you go below that, the next layer of um, potential support will be um, the, the early June lows in at 16.70. Now, lastly, I'll take a look at Brent crude oil, the August contract. So, what's been really fueling the oil market the last few months, no pun intended, um, was the talk of reopening economies and then the actual reopening of economies. So, we had a major move to the upside in the energy market, say from late August, so put from late April uh, into June, a uh, pretty phenomenal rebound in the oil market. It's been a bit, it's it hasn't really pulled back a whole lot recently, but hasn't gained any any any, any more ground. So we're not too far away from a, a three month high on um, on Brent crude oil, the August contract, but it hasn't it's really making much ground. And as, as I suspect, there are kind of concerns in relation to demand. If there's talk that economies are now going to be kind of re in, in lockdown restrictions are going to be reimposed, how is that going to impact demand? So. Recently, sentiments surrounding stock markets and sentiments surrounding the, the oil market has been reasonably similar. Our economy is reopening. If so, demand is likely to rise. Our economies are going to have their reopening plans put on hold or reversed. That's likely to have a negative impact on the, on the oil, on demand for oil. But nonetheless, uh, the upward trend in the last few months is still intact. If you press on higher from here, if you take out uh, the most recent highs on Brent crude, we could be looking at targeting the, the lows of early, um, well, the, um, this, this level here, the level seen in, in the first week, in the first week of March, uh, before the big drop off, in at forty-five dollars and eighty-five cents. And even if you do have a, have a pullback, we could be looking at retesting the um, the lows of um, of mid June in around thirty-seven dollars. And if you go below thirty-seven bucks, we could head back toward this blue line here, the fifty-day moving average at thirty-five, sorry, thirty-five dollars spot thirty-five cents. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, that's all for this week. Uh, have a good trading week. Stay safe and good luck.